CataractCoach.com, negative spheric collaboration IOLs. These help to offset the positive spheric collaboration from old LASIK. So you can tell the patient had prior LASIK because look, we fill up the anterior chamber with viscoelastic and look how super deep that is. So this patient has a long axial length, 27 and a half millimeter axial length, used to be very myopic, had about minus eight diopters of myopia, and then had LASIK performed many years ago. Now the LASIK laser, eczema lasers have evolved a lot over the years. And the newer lasers really can produce a very high quality ablation and not cause too much change in the spheric collaboration of the cornea. But in the old days, we had eczema lasers that were flattening the cornea so much without keeping the proper profile. And as a result, those corneas developed a lot of positive spheric collaboration. And the issue there is that, well, now that's going to distort image quality, be poor image quality. And then, believe it or not, back in the days, we had IOLs that only also had positive spheric collaboration. And I've got a video coming up in the next week or two about spheric collaboration, and I'll help you understand it with a very nice lecture about that, a brief one, obviously. But in this case here, the patient has, as measured by corneal devices here and mapping, a lot of positive spheric collaboration in the cornea. So we have negative spheric collaboration IOLs now. And you can talk to your manufacturers and your representatives from these companies and ask them what degree of negative spheric collaboration do they have. And so in this patient, because there's such a high degree of positive spheric collaboration, I want to put in the IOL for me that has the most negative spheric collaboration. And that's going to be this line of lenses, as you could saw from the title picture. These are the Technus lenses. Now, the Technus lenses are great lenses. These were originally made by a company called Pharmacia. And they had this idea of having a negative spheric collaboration lens, which is a little harder to make because the curvature is variable on the lens, but the power ends up being more consistent here. And so when they made these lenses, they were very well received initially as a three-piece design. That was later sold off to a company called AMO, at the time Advanced Medical Optics. And that was uh, then sold to a company called Abbott, in which then AMO became Abbott Medical Optics. And most recently, Abbott sold this ophthalmology unit to Johnson & Johnson. So now it's Johnson & Johnson Vision, or J&J Vision. Look, it's the same technology here. So these um, lenses that have negative spheric collaboration have another thing, and that is they have a different refractive index. They have a lower refractive index than, let's say, an Alcon lens. As a result, with the lower refractive index, the same 6 millimeter optic and the same dioptric power, well, obviously, with a lower um, refractive index, the lens optic's going to be thicker, right? Think about that. And so why does this company now, when they make this lens, why is there that null zone around the optic? Yes, the whole thing is 6 millimeters, but the focusing part of the optic is about 5 millimeters, maybe 5.1, 5.2. But there's that null zone, and I'm going to show you this as we put the lens in. The reason is so the lens is not going to be as thick and therefore can go in the same small incision injectors as the competition. If this lens was a full 6 millimeter focusing optic, well then the issue half here is going to be thicker and you won't be able to get it through the same small incision here. So again, as the lens is delivered inside the eye here, there it is. Again, single piece hydrophobic acrylic lens. As it opens up, you'll see, yeah, on the IOL optic, there is a null zone, 360. So the optic part that actually focuses light is about five-ish millimeters. Whereas the overall optic, there you can see the null zone, the overall optic is six millimeters. So that null zone is not gonna actually focus light. And so, at least not, not, not at the same power as the optic. So now removing the viscoelastic here from the eye, the case, case is gonna look pretty good here. You definitely wanna have these lenses well-centered. I'll show you in my lecture coming up why it's so important to have these IOLs beautifully centered. Because if you decenter a lens that has negative spherical collaboration in an eye where the cornea has this, all this positive spherical collaboration, you can actually induce other aberrations like coma. And I know it sounds strange, but I'll show you in the, in the lecture coming up in the next week or two all about that. So here, end of the case looks pretty darn good. And we'll seal up the incision here. And again, now you can easily tell there's that null zone of the optic. And now you know why. It's because the lower refractive index, the company didn't want to have a very thick, thick lens that would have to go through a larger incision and a larger injector. And so to be able to use a smaller injector, 
they made a smart decision here. So let's just make the optic focusing part a little bit smaller. And therefore, the central optic thickness is a little bit less. Thanks for watching.